All right, hey everybody. I'm gonna do the upper yard video of the uh, urban homestead. I'll walk up the trail here. Here's one of the other strawberry patches I was mentioning. We got this one here, and then we also have our other one in the front yard. Let's see, we got raspberries here. There's some more raspberries under there. I think I'll leave those. If Paula knows that I came and took them all, she's gonna get angry. Maybe she'll beat me. Let's see. I came through and stomped down all the uh, cover crop and everything I had growing back there. I had to strap up the uh, apple tree because it started leaning because of all the fruit. So I kind of put in some bracing here just to guide it back this direction. It seems to lean more and more this way every year. Being that we're on a hillside, all the trees seem to naturally want to lean. Let's see, currants are doing well. Uh, before I go this way, let's go up here. So we planted the rest of the marigolds along here in this box. Cleaned up the uh, cover crop. Dumped it back there. So we've got everything all ready for the heat of summer. I did throw some more hairy vetch cover crop in there to grow. So that'll start growing, giving that soil some cover. Let's see. Here's the currants. Oh, and we were getting some tomatoes. Paul and I came through. You can kind of see there's some red tomatoes. These are those Matt's wild cherry tomatoes. So there's, you know, you can see there's quite a few of them showing up now. We ate the red ones last night on our yard walk. So there's the currants. And there, another one over here. transplanted from down below. So we got a total of seven current bushes all along here now. These are our honey berry bushes. And we've got our tomatoes. We've got our cucumbers going along there. They seem to be doing pretty well. I had to add a new drip line. They weren't getting enough water from the sprinkler because of the fence. It kind of cuts it off up here so I had to put a new drip line tie into this drip irrigation here. That should help it out. Seems to be helping because we got a lot of new growth on the ones that kind of burned off. Tomatoes are doing well. We've got some fruit set. Quite a few up here. Flowering. There's some fruit set on that one. Scarlet runner beans are doing good. You can see on this one up here the uh, flowers are starting to open. Like that one there. As soon as those start to really open up on the higher ones, see they're starting to come over the top. So I've been kind of weaving them in and out to go back and forth. But once they start to really take off, this is going to really have a nice focal point for the back of our yard along this whole fence up through here. Kind of gives you a, a break up of that big, long, wooden, boring fence having something like this. Let's see in here. We got the beans, they seem to be doing pretty well. There's that white Russian kale. Here's our fig tree. Looks like our uh, Lee and Lang juju bees are doing really well this year. A lot of new growth. I have to tie these guys back, kind of stake them up a little bit so they grow a little taller. Blueberries down there. So this is kind of like a miniature version of what permaculture is. Because we've got in our lowest layer, we've got asparagus. They come up through here. In the next layer, we've got beans as a first shrub layer, I guess you'd say. Then our next shrub layer will be the blueberries. Then we have the brush layer, which is these Lee and Lang jujubes. And then for the tree layer, we have the fig. So that kind of gives you, a, I guess, the whole, the whole package of what I try to do with every layer in the ecosystem we're doing here. Every layer has a purpose. And so like this one here, we've got the berry bushes. We've got the red gummies. These are kind of a big, tall bush. I don't have anything down below in these because, you know, the, you wouldn't really get anything to grow with a berry bush over the top. But, you know, I always try to put, you know, staggered growth throughout. And I did see a few of the gummies had actually formed 
There's one back there somewhere. That's like a miniature fig. But uh, we got the aronia berry, which is a taller berry bush. We got the raspberries for underneath. We got a fig, and then blueberries in the back. So it's just another way of doing it. And these are all blueberries through here. You can see there's a ton of blueberries on these. So we've got like two or three. There goes one of our snakes. And that's our pawpaw tree. And that's our littler pawpaw tree. It was transplanted in here a year after this one, I believe. Because we used to have that pawpaw up over here. And so it wasn't getting as much sun as this one down here, so we moved it down to be right here. And so it seems to be recovering pretty well. It's put on a, like quite a bit of growth from last year. And that's a sea berry. Here's another sea berry bush. Some more blueberries all through here. That there. And this here are elderberries. And that's a nectarine. Looks like our little peach tree up here seems to be doing okay. That's kind of the upper yard. Everything seems to be doing pretty well.